Welcome to Mystery Stories for Sleep, where the unknown meets the mysterious. Relax, unwind, and let the intrigue carry you into the night. Your journey into the strange begins now. Ready for some mysteries today? Huh. We're diving deep, you know, into Antarctica. Oh, always up for that. This place, it just sparks the imagination, doesn't it? Yeah. You hear about ancient civilizations. Right, right, and hidden bases. Yeah, hidden bases, and then, you know, maybe even aliens. A touch of the extraterrestrial. Exactly, he's got to love that, right? <laughs> for sure. So we're actually, um, we're going to be looking at this episode okay. from Mystery Stories for Sleep. I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's called The Dark Side of Antarctica, Unearthing Hidden Mysteries Beneath the Ice. Catchy. I know, right. <laughs> but it makes you think, like, Antarctica, you picture this barren, unforgiving place. Yeah, it's like the epitome of desolate, right? Totally. But it holds these crazy secrets about Earth's past. Oh, yeah. And, like, it just fuels all these theories. Exactly. And, you know, what gets me is how different it used to be. Oh, you mean? Like, millions of years ago. Yeah, yeah. With the dinosaurs. Yeah. Dinosaurs roaming around. <laughs> lush green paradise, you know. It's wild to think about. It's like what we see now is just a frozen blip on the radar. It makes you wonder what's under there, right? I mean, all that ice, what's it hiding? Right. That's the big question. And speaking of what's hidden, let's talk about those ancient civilization theories. Okay, yeah. The episode we're looking at, they suggest that, like, advanced societies were there. Mm, interesting. Maybe with tech we can't even fathom, you know. What do you think about that? Well, it's not exactly a new idea, you know, like you can trace it back even to early explorers. Oh, really? Yeah, they'd find these weird formations, unexplained stuff, and write about it in their journals. Like hinting at something bigger. Yeah, kind of like breadcrumbs, you know? Mm. And then there's that Piri Reese map. The map? What's It's the... from 1513, and it supposedly shows Antarctica's coastline. Wait, 1513? But Antarctica wasn't you know, discovered until way later. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like centuries before. That's crazy. So how do they explain that? Well, some people think it's proof, right? Like yeah. this ancient civilization, they were so advanced. They could map it before the ice. Exactly. Like way ahead of their time. Others, though, they say it's just, you know, a coincidence. Like we're seeing what we want to see. Yeah, like maybe misinterpreting things or the map's not even that accurate. Hmm. I see. But then there are those satellite images, right? With the pyramids and stuff. What's the deal with those? Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. The ones that look like, you know, actual structures under the ice. Yeah, like man-made. What do scientists say about them? Well, they're intriguing, for sure. But most scientists, they'll tell you it's just natural formations. Really? Even with those straight lines and everything? Yeah, they say ice and erosion can do some pretty crazy stuff over time. Huh. So, like, nature just mimicking something man-made. Exactly. But, you know, that little seed of doubt, that's what keeps those other theories alive. It's true. It's like, we love a good mystery. Absolutely. And the possibility, however small, is always exciting. Okay, so we've got ancient mysteries... Maybe, maybe not. But what about the actual science? They talked about some cool discoveries in the episode, right? Oh, yeah. Antarctica is like a scientific playground in a lot of ways. It's not just about these mysteries. Scientists are finding crazy stuff down there. Like what? Give me an example. Well, they found these microbes, right? In Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok. That's the one buried under the ice. Yeah, miles down. And these microbes, they're like extremophiles. Extremophiles. That sounds... Uh... Intense. What are those exactly? They're like the ultimate survivors living in total darkness, crazy pressure. And no air, right? Like under all that ice. Exactly. And not a lot of food gone there either, but they've adapted. So they're like totally different from regular bacteria. Oh, yeah. These guys are like the special forces of the microbe world. That's wild. But why does it matter? Like why study them? Well, think about it. They might hold clues to how life could exist in other extreme places. No, I, on other planets even. Yeah, exactly. If they can make it there, who knows what else is out there, right? That's mind blowing. It's like one little microbe in Antarctica is changing how we see the universe. That's science for you, always pushing the boundaries. It makes you think about all this melting ice we keep hearing about. Ah, uh, yeah, the climate change stuff. It's scary. But the episode mentioned it's uncovering more of Antarctica, too. Right, like stuff that's been hidden for, who knows, m millions of years, maybe. And some of those things they're finding, they look like structures, right? Yeah, like near the Pine Island Glacier, there's this one formation. With, like, straight edges. I saw pictures. It looked man-made. <laughs> it definitely catches your eye, right? <sighs> but scientists, they're a bit more cautious. I don't think it's an ancient city or anything. Well, they usually explain it with things like, 
glacial erosion, freeze thaw cycles. So like, nature's a better architect than we thought. It's pretty amazing what nature can do with enough time, that's for sure. Okay, so maybe not ancient cities. But still, Antarctica keeps surprising us. It really does. It's like, the more we find out, the less we really know. And then there's the whole secret base thing, right? Ah, uh, yes, the classic, can't forget about those. Like those stories about Nazis in Antarctica building secret hideouts. Yeah, that's a popular one. Secret technologies, societies, you know, the whole nine yards. It does sound a little, uh, out there, I gotta say. Is there any truth to it? Well, no concrete evidence, but there are some curious historical events. Oh, like what? Well, there was this Operation Operation High Jump back in 46. High Jump? What was that all about? So, officially, it was a big U.S. Navy expedition led by Admiral Byrd. The famous explorer guy. The one and only. But see, there are some who think it was more than just mapping in science. Really? Like what? They were looking for something else? Well, it was a huge operation, lots of military equipment, and Bird himself, he made some cryptic remark. Cryptic? Like how? Well, say... you know, stuff about encountering a new enemy down there, fueling those conspiracy theories. Hmm, new enemy. That does sound a bit suspicious. Right. I mean, it makes you wonder what he really meant. It's easy to see how people jump to conclusions, especially with a place like Antarctica. Exactly. It's yeah. all about connecting the dots, even if those dots are a bit, you know, scattered. It's like we're all drawn to these mysteries, trying to make sense of them. That's part of the fun, isn't it? Trying to figure out what's really going on. And speaking of figuring things out, what about all the secrecy surrounding Antarctica? Like, they talk about the U.S. and Russia keeping things under wraps. Right, those restricted zones, always a topic of interest. It's like, it's already mysterious, and then they slap a big keep out sign on it. Well, to be fair, some of it is for good reason. Like protecting scientific research. Yeah, and preserving the environment, I get that. But it's human nature, right? Yep. The more secrecy, the more we want to know. It's true, like, what are they hiding? Yeah. Makes your imagination run wild. Exactly, and that's what keeps us coming back for more. The allure of the unknown. You know, it's funny, right? It's like Antarctica, it's this giant mirror <laughs> reflecting our curiosity back at us. Yeah, yeah. Like all these questions we have about history, about science. And if there's something more out there, you know, beyond what we know. Exactly. And the fact that it's right here on our planet. It's humbling, isn't it? Totally humbling and kind of exciting too, you know. Oh, for sure. Like we haven't figured it all out. Not even close. So much left to discover. And that's what keeps things interesting, right? That sense of wonder. Absolutely. So it drives us to learn to explore. It pushed the boundaries of what we think is possible. Okay, but we've covered a lot, right? Ancient civilizations, secret bases. Those microbes, can't forget about those little guys. They're pretty cool. Yeah. So out of everything, what stands out to you the most about Antarctica? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I think it's how science and speculation, they kind of like intertwine down there. Right, like feeding off each other. Exactly, you have these crazy theories and then boom, new discovery. And sometimes it just makes things even more mysterious. Totally, like those formations we talked about, right? Could be yeah. natural, but... But there's that little voice that says, what if? Exactly. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It makes you think. It's true, Antarctica. It's like a giant question mark on the map. A constant source of fascination. Challenging us to find answers, but maybe never giving them all up. Well, that wouldn't be any fun, would it? Definitely not. <laughs> so for everyone listening, what will it be for you? What captures your imagination about Antarctica? The ancient civilizations. Maybe it's the thrill of a hidden base. Or maybe those tough little extremophiles showed you something new about life itself. Whatever it is, keep that curiosity alive. Don't be afraid to question, to explore, to imagine. Because with Antarctica, one thing's for sure, there's always more to uncover. And who knows what we'll find next. That's the beauty of it all.